cordless tools got you down, we might have a solution. What do you do with your cordless tools? If you're like me, they're everywhere and they have been everywhere and then you can't find them and you want to put stuff away and you stick it on the floor and you just lose your stuff. So shop organization is what we're working on right now as part of the build out. And if you follow the channel, you know we built a French cleat wall so we've got room to hang things now. And that seems like a great place to keep our tools. The cool thing about this build is you get the plans for free. Make sure you pay attention to the video and as we go through, I will drop a discount code on our storefront and you can go in and you can download a PDF of these plans. If you have any questions, of course, you know how to reach me, scott at thecraftywiener.com or at thecraftywiener via Facebook or Instagram. Thanks for coming back. Let's get started. Like I said in the intro, this project's being made out of scrap plywood I got hanging around the shop. I mean, after all, all the best shop projects are, right? So we grabbed the scrap, we put it on my assembly table, you notice that Adam came out to hang out for the day and we worked on layout. Once we had the pieces laid out, we grabbed my track saw and we went ahead and started ripping the pieces to prepare them for their final cutting on the table saw. Getting Adam to act as my human outfit table wasn't too difficult to do, so we grabbed the pieces that we had ripped with the track saw and we headed over to my table saw. Once we got to the table saw, we went ahead and we cut things to the proper width. And once we had the pieces to the proper width, I placed them on my King's Fine Woodworking Extreme Crosscut Sled, checking my measurements once or twice, and went ahead and started ripping the pieces to their proper length. Now, this is where having friends in the shop isn't always a good thing. I love having my friends in the shop to hang out. In fact, I want my shop to be a destination shop. But sometimes it does come with consequences. Don't let anybody ever, ever, ever tell you that we don't mess up. Um, I even wrote the measurements down. Adam's over there, he's laughing. He's on the other side, see? He's there, he's, he, he's laughing. Um, we cut to the right width, and then when it came to cut to the length, I cut it in half. It's supposed to be 24 and a quarter inches. Now, being a guy, I may have an opportunity here or there to fake length, but I can't deny this. After all, we all love cutting things multiple times, don't we? So we went back over to the table saw, we recut everything to width, and once that was taken care of, that allowed me to go over to my miter station. These pieces actually fit on my miter station, and I was able to cut them there. Speaking of the miter station, if you haven't seen this miter station, I do have a video out of this build. This miter station was designed by Michael Long of MK Designs. If you haven't made it over to his page yet or his channel, you really need to do that. Michael is an exceptional builder. And if you like the miter station and you want to build one for yourselves, you can get yourself a set of plans from Mike on his website. And if you use the discount code shown below, you can actually get a discount on these plans. This is a fantastic miter station. Again, check out Mike's Space and maybe buy some plans. Now, one of the things I like to do when I'm doing builds like this that have multiple parts is I'll go ahead and I mark the parts. Painter's tape does great with a pencil or a Sharpie. Go ahead, put some painter's tape on the parts. You can stack them together and then you have all your parts together or you can be like me and rip it off because you marked the wrong part. This is just the first of many, many humorous, you've got to be kidding moments in this build. You know what? Let's just blame it all on Adam. It's his fault. Here's a little trick when cutting on your miter station, when you're cutting plywood, go ahead and score the top of the plywood. Go down like a 16th of an inch before doing your final cut. That'll take care of chipping. Make sure you don't have a lot of tear out and you get a nice clean cut. Those of you that follow my feed will recognize Holly. Holly comes in and helps me a couple times a week. And at this point, she'd pretty much had enough of Adam's and my shenanigans. So she took over measuring. We're using pocket hole joinery for this build because it just makes quick work of assembly and allows us to use the cabinet as soon as we're done. In fact, Holly was so tired of Adam and I, she just kicked us out of the way and she drilled the pocket holes herself. I guess she didn't trust us. While Holly was busy with the pocket holes, I decided to start measuring out the placement for the tools. Now, I have a collection of Milwaukee and Ryobi tools, and that's how I set my spacing out. You're going to have to measure your tools to make sure that it fits 
the brand that you have. If you purchase the plans, just recognize that that is how these are spaced. And I went ahead and I made lines, making sure to X in between the two lines so I knew where I was cutting out. Note to self, when Adam's coming to help with projects, do not let him near any writing utensils because, well, yeah, really, Adam? Using a tape measure, I went ahead and I found the center in between each line and also found the center point of where I'm going to drill a hole that's going to create the arc for the actual holder. Grab yourself a mechanical or manual center punch and go ahead and mark those spaces. This is going to help you out when you take it over to your drill press or using a manual drill and help assure that you're not going to have any bit wander, which is something you don't want to have. You want this hole to actually remain on center. And again, this gives us a starting spot for your drill bit and makes life a lot easier on you. Before we went ahead and drilled those holes though, we wanted to take care of a couple last cuts and that starts with the dado stack and then we could stow the table saw for the day. This is a quarter inch wide, quarter inch deep dado that's gonna hold a small shelf underneath for screw boxes and drill bits and measurements are on the plans and if you have a keen eye, you will know here that I'm actually doing this wrong and I didn't realize it till I went to do assembly. Go me. Those slide-in shelves we talked about, well, I had some quarter-inch walnut ply laying around the shop from my scotch cabinet build, and that'll do just fine. Remember, this is a scrap project, so you're getting rid of all the stuff that you don't know what to do with anyway. So the fact that it's got walnut accents is not only, well, quite frankly, sexy, but practical. We finally made it over the drill press so that we could start drilling those holes that we talked about and we centered the Forstner bit over the indentations that we created using the mechanical center punch. Now, in order to protect ourselves from blow through on the other side, which is a ton of cleanup work, we only drilled about three quarters of the way through. I went through just to the point where the tip of the Forstner bit broke the other side. That gave us a reverse landing mark so that when we flip the board over, we know that we're centered from where we drilled from the first side, if you follow the way I'm saying this, because I'm not quite sure I do. But anyway, we flipped it over and we finished off drilling and we have perfectly drilled circles with no blowout. Using a speed square and a pencil, I marked from the outside of the circle back to the end of the board, and then I took my jigsaw running along the edge of the speed square as a straight edge, and then it becomes, well, frankly, Woodshop's version of connect the dots. Except in this connect the dots game, we actually create a slot where we can hang our tools. Pretty cool, huh? As I got ready for assembly, I realized I had one more cut to do on the table saw, and that was to put a chamfer on the front end, because frankly, I know myself, and I'm gonna end up hitting my wrist or hand every time I go to take something off of the shelf. So I took the two side pieces, and I taped them together using some blue painter's tape, then took them over the table saw and I set it at an angle that's quite frankly referenced in the plans. I just faked it to see what looked good. And then I got excited because it was time for assembly. Assembly is pretty straightforward on the cabinet. Just make sure that your dados are properly lined up because once it's put together, you're not gonna wanna take it apart. Don't ask me how I know. But we went ahead and we put a little bit of glue on each edge that helps with the connecting power, although be perfectly honest with you, pocket screws are more than enough. And if you don't want to use pocket screws for this build, that's fine. Get yourself some regular wood screws or some deck screws and you can surface screw through the edge into the end grain. Just make sure to add just a little bit of glue. Again, the glue is going to help with extra holding power. I say this in a lot of my how-to videos. The rest really was just rinse, lather, repeat. Wow. And I always mess that up as well lather, rinse, repeat. And I just went ahead and I put the carcass together using the pocket screws and when it was done, it was done. You don't need to watch me screw in, oh, I don't know, 58 separate screws. You get the point. Next up on the assembly was what will forever be known as the doodad shelf. Now there's no magic to this, just make sure that your dados are properly aligned. You don't wanna find that one out later. Using a tape measure, I found the center and then using my speed square as support, I just pocket screwed this in place. Wanting to give a little bit of support to that doodad shelf holder, using my tape measure, I found the center of where that shelf was going to be, made sure it was plumb, flipped the cabinet around, transferred that measurement to the back so I could surface screw through the back with some deck screws. But you know me, right? Oh, yes, I remember now. Missed it by that much. <laughs> 
After correcting that mistake, it was back to the pattern. Make sure everything's square, make sure everything's level. Glue, pocket screw, assemble. Glue, pocket screw, assemble. And it just went like that, hopefully without any more mistakes, until we completed assembly. Before I installed the tool holder shelf, I took it over to the spindle sander and we cleaned up the edges. This is the easiest way to get the inside of the holders smooth. Certainly you can do this by hand, but spindle sanding, it made quick work of the process. I think it took me maybe five minutes to get this cleaned up. And it really is an important part of the project if you want to make sure your tools move in and out with ease. Along the same lines, I wanted to ease the edges of that shelf, so I went over to my router table. Using a quarter inch rounding bit, I just went ahead and I eased the edges of where the tools are going to sit. You can do this with a trim router. If you do not have a router or a router table, you can also do this with a sanding block. Again, we're just easing the edges off. This is going to make it easier to put the tools in and out and not have any hang up. Wanting to give a little extra support to that shelf, I grabbed some scraps and cut a cleat. Using glue and some cabinet screws, I went ahead and I attached it to the inside of the cabinet. Now this shot is brought to you by my left elbow, which continued to get in the way, but you get the idea. It's gonna give you a level place to put the shelf when you go ahead and do assembly. Once the cleats were in place, I spread some glue on top of those cleats and slid the shelf into place. I think everybody does this when they're building a cabinet like this. You know, the moment of truth where you check to make sure that everything actually fits. Look at that, it actually fits. I'm gonna be hanging this cabinet from my French cleat wall in the shop. I had some pieces left over from that build and I just hung onto the cleat. So over to the miter box we go and we cut the French cleats to length. Keeping in line with this build's theme, it's glue and screws for the French cleat. I grabbed my glue bottle, which still has some type bond three in it and I made sure to get proper coverage along the back of the cleat. Yes, folks, make sure you put it on the back of the cleat. Don't ask me how I figured that one out. Then I took it and I held it up to the top of the cabinet, got myself some quick clamps, made sure I had enough pressure, grabbed a countersink bit and some of those deck screws that we all love. And I put deck screws in about every six to eight inches. That's probably overkill, but it's more than enough to support the glue while the glue cures and just that little extra bit of support. I made this cleat to put on the front of the top shelf. You know, when you're going to pull batteries or anything that's sitting on that shelf off, you want to have something to go against so you don't bring the charger with you by mistake. So I grabbed a scrap piece of cutoffs, cut a 45 degree angle on it just to make it look nice, quite honestly. Put some glue on there, grabbed myself some pin nails to hold in place while the glue set up, and I set it flush with the front, again, making sure that I don't pull the charger off when I'm taking a battery. And now comes your and my favorite part of every project we do, sanding. Again, this is a shop project. It doesn't need to be perfect, but I grabbed my random orbit sander, grabbed some 150 grit. Plywood, generally speaking, comes pretty well sanded, but I just wanted to get any of the nubs off. Made sure I softened all those edges that I didn't put an actual edge on. Again, don't want to be in a position where I'm running my hand across some sharp edge and get a splinter. So basically, I'm making it splinter free. Speaking of splinter free, if you haven't made it over to our new online merchandising shop, now would be a good time to do it. We've started to get together some merchandise. We've got shop t-shirts, some lanyards, and some shop hats. This is also where you're going to be able to get your plans for this project, and you'll be able to download those for free using the code showing below. While you're there, make sure you take a look around, and you can actually get a t-shirt that says splinter free. A late in the game decision was made as I got towards the time when I was going to poly this project. Grabbed a tape measure and measured from the back and the top of the cabinet and grabbed a hole saw and drilled a hole on both sides. This was so I could put the cables from the chargers or whatever else I put up there and not have them just laying everywhere. So I created a cable chase. Now, in this particular case, I'm using an inch and three quarter hole saw. You can use whichever size works for you. Just like the Forstner bit though, make sure that you go halfway through and then come from the other side. That's gonna save you a lot of sanding time later by reducing tear out. I grabbed a gallon of polycrylic that I had laying around the shop. This is a water-based polyurethane. I took a sponge brush and just gave a good once over, no, actually it was more like twice over, of the cabinet, making sure to sand with 120 just to knock the nubs down in between each coat. 
when I was done with coat number two, I again gave it a light sanding. And then you know what? It is time to hang this beautiful cabinet on the wall. This was a great project. I hope you enjoyed the video. Super simple to build. It only takes one sheet of three quarter inch plywood, a quarter sheet of eighth inch ply and some polyurethane. You can use deck screws, you can use pocket holes, however you want to put it together. You can even glue it and use brad nails. The beauty of it is it's hanging on the French cleat wall. We can put it anywhere, which is kind of a teaser for another project we're gonna have in a couple months where we're gonna make this thing mobile so that you can move it around the shop. So anyway, that's about it. Thank you so much for coming. It was great seeing you. We hope you enjoyed the channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share the channel. Hit that ringy dingy button so that you know when we get new videos out. In the meantime, make sure you're getting your shop and you're building beautiful things, and we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great day.